Hello, everybody. Today, uh, this video is about Pixie Bricks, which I recently discovered, um, and how you can use it with Trello. So just to give a little bit more context, um, Pixie Bricks is another sort of automation tool, kind of like Zapier or Butler for Trello. But what you can do is instead of relying on a trigger that happens in another app, you can kind of create your own trigger by editing the UX of a website by adding an element like a button or uh, interacting with the, the pieces on the site to be able to transfer that data to Trello or Slack or anywhere really. So um, today we're going to talk about specifically how to use that for, you guessed it, Trello. Um, so yeah, so let's get started here. So first thing is to head over to their site. You want to get started and get the Chrome extension installed. They've got really good docs on how to do all of that. And then once you're there, head over to the marketplace because they've already got some pre-built pieces that we can kind of play around with to get our feet wet and kind of understand what's going on a little bit more. Um, I'm going to show you how to follow their blueprint for adding highlighted text to Trello. So what we'll do is be able to highlight a snippet of text and then right click and send that straight over to uh, Trello. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then I'll show you a, a customized use case I came up with after that and how we can build that. So let's get started. Feel free to go ahead and follow along. Um, click activate once you're in this marketplace on that Trello, uh, Trello blueprint there. And this is honestly pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to be honest, in this first one, you really don't have to do too much. You just kind of read along here. This is saying what you're doing, which is creating that brick from selected text. Um, next, you'll set up your integration. If you don't already have something set up, you'll probably need to click Add New here. And don't worry, this might look like, ah, I don't know what an API key is. Don't worry. It says right below it where you can go get that from and get that plugged in. Super easy to go. Um, just hit Next Step. And then this is saying where you'll be able to perform uh, the action and what permissions are needed. Um, or Sorry, it's actually just saying what permissions are needed for, for being able to do this. And you've got, or I already have Trello.com set up. You may need to authorize something there, but you should be good to go. Um, click activate and voila. So use case I'm going to explain in this video. Um, I actually have a Trello board that uh, my sister and my partner and I live out of where we plan all of our meals. So let's just say I'm on a recipe. Let's say I found this recipe that I like, slow cooker chicken curry. Um, this actually looks amazing. Let's say I want to make it, but I realize, oh, I'm out of chicken stock. I need some more of that. I'm going to highlight that, right click that, and I see the Pixie Bricks menu here, and I see the option for, ooh, new Trello card from selected text. Click that, and it'll take it a second to load because I have an absurd amount of Trello boards, more than any one person should have. Um, scroll down, find the board you want it on, and hit submit. And then it's going to pull up a prompt and ask you which list to add it to. I'm going to add it to things to buy, and add a title says buy me. And you can see the highlighted text we've got there is all set up. So hit submit. And then let's head over here and see. Do, 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 here it is. It says buy me chicken stock. And we've got that highlighted text right there. So this is really cool um, and can be helpful, but. For those of you like me who are using the Trello Chrome extension and periodically it's deprecated or um, disabled, maybe some of the rest of you don't even have it, uh, the functionality with that is being able to send a link to Trello super quickly. And so I was like, can I recreate Pixie Bricks to do that? And the answer is yes, we can. So I'm actually going to show you how to do that. Um, and in that example, I uh, show you how to set it up with Pixie Bricks. So to get started, you're going to need to uh, venture into some unknown territory if you're not a developer. You're going to need to right click from any web page and click inspect. And then that's going to open up this thing that looks like you just walked into like some massive lab and it's okay. Don't worry. It can be kind of scary if you haven't been in there before. Just look at this top bar for the words pixie bricks. And if you don't see it, you might have some arrows here. If your screen's a little bit shortened, it'll show some arrows like this and you might need to click that. Um, so do that and then you should see pixie bricks. And so this brings up kind of your, your main sort of dashboard where you can interact and create things. So let's look over here because these are the extensions that have been created. So we'll click this to kind of walk through what just happened so we can customize our own to create one that sends text uh, and links to Trello. 
So you see, here's the extension name. Here's the title. This is literally what is the the title of what um, it's called, where where you see it, like what the text of that that brick that you saw me before it said new Trello card from selected text. Um, context, this is what all it is grabbing from that. This is just grabbing the selected text. Um, sites, this is actually where you can use this extension. So if you just want to use it on certain pages, you can set that. If you want to use it everywhere, which this is what this is saying, then that's how you can do that. Uh, the next step um, it, uh, or the brick is called get Trello username. And so this is where, you know, since we've already got it configured, it's defaulting to, hey, who who's the Trello username? Let's go set that up and grab that. And it spits out what that is here in output, which is helpful to use in the next brick where it says, hey, who, who's the user? Oh, you just got that in the last thing and we're calling that output. Go look up that and return a list of all of the different Trello boards that user has. And then once they picked one, that is called output here, which we will use on the next card, where we are trying to, um, you know, actually inject content to that board. So grab that board ID, and then it'll spit out the lists that are affiliated with that. If you remember, um, when I selected the meals board, it said um, all of my different lists there. And then here is the selection text in where we're putting it, which is in the card description. If we wanted to put it in the card name instead, we could paste it and change that. I'm just going to leave this for now, but just so you you know what that is. And um, yeah, so that's exactly how it's set up and what it looks like. And so now let's go through how to set up one of our own that will send text over there. So you start by clicking this add button up here. We're going to add another context menu, which means it comes up from when you right click on a page. So we're going to click create new context menu. This is what you title it. I'm going to call it Brittany example. Um, actually, I'm going to call it something more helpful, like uh, send link to Trello. And I'm actually going to name the same thing down here, although this is more important because this is the text that actually is going to show up um, when I right click. So I'm going to highlight that or call it that for context. Um, I actually don't need all. I'm just going to grab selection. And for sites for it to work on, um, right now it's saying, oh, just work on this specific page, but I want it to work everywhere on the internet. So you just need to click all URLs and it automatically spits out what that is right there for you. Um, same down here, I'm gonna go ahead and click all URLs. So that is all good to go. And just so you can see, this is kind of the information we have access to based on that. So I'm most interested in this title which is probably what I'm gonna to wanna to name my card and this URL, which I'm gonna to wanna to add in the description and Trello will create a link for that. So now let's click add. And we're gonna to start with getting the Trello username just like that other one did. Again, you should already have this configured if you went through the previous steps with me. So it should be all good to go there. If not, follow these steps to, to get that configured. Um, I'm going to rename my output user just because it helps me kind of keep track of uh, my variable names and what's being put out where. So I'm going to call that user. And then for the next brick, we need to get boards, Trello, do, do, do choose Trello boards from user. Uh, so what we're going to put here is, this is where I'm going to use um, what I just put with user. And I'm going to wrap around two um, of these curly brackets and at user, which is variable here. And basically I'm saying, hey, go that username you just grabbed, go grab that and look for all the different boards that come up with that. And then I'm actually gonna change this to board because that's what it's going to return. So add another brick. We're gonna call this create Trello card, a new card on Trello with prompt, that's what it's called. And for board ID, we're gonna actually use three curly brackets here and hit at board. And that is going to say, hey, okay, now go look up that board we just got there, return those, those list values there. And then for card description, I wanna attach the list. So to grab that variable, I just go back up here to input. I don't have to worry about saving anything. And I can just copy that and it will paste the variable name. And I just paste that in there. And I'm gonna wrap that in three curly braces as well. And then same thing for the title. Just copy that, go back down here, paste that in, and 
And now we are going to hit save. All right, so now let's go try it out. So my recipe here, say I want to highlight that, highlight the text, look for my Pixie Brick, send link to Trello, click that. And again, give it a second because it's looking through my literally hundreds and hundreds of boards. I don't even know how many boards I have. It's an insane amount. So you got to give it a second. Don't worry. It shouldn't be a problem for most of the rest of you because you don't have an insane amount of boards. So go down here and click Britain We and V Meals, submit, and then give it a minute. It's going to pop up and say, hey, here's the list that we want to query and have all of my data ready to go. Do, do, do. Here it comes. I see it. There it is. Boom. So I'm going to say newbies and you can see the title is showing up right here. I can change that if I want to. And the description is right here. I could say I want to make this or add anything else there. Hit submit and bada boom, bada bing. Head on over here and boom, here's my card. I've got the title there. I've got that. And then I've got the link. So when I'm ready to meal plan, it is right there. So I'm going to wrap it up here just because this is already uh, kind of over 10 minutes and I try to keep these short, but hope you can see that there's a lot of potential with Pixie Bricks and a lot you can do here. So uh, looking forward to creating more videos. If you all find this interesting and want to learn how to do more, uh, hit me up and let me know and we will figure out how to do it.